All right, today we're going to talk about resilience and the impact or the correlation between resilience and stress. We're also going to dive a little bit deeper into things like chronic illness, autoimmune issues, addiction, and how resilience is the ultimate answer to work our way out of those uh, conditions. I have with me a chronic illness expert with a company out in Colorado called A, a New Life Center. Uh, they're based out of Denver, and her name is Josie Warren. Josie, thanks for being with me today. Dave, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be able to be here and share with your audience. Josie, did I say that right? A new, it's A N E W. A new is it, that that that's the right way to say it. You yep, got it correct. A new life center. Okay, mm -hmm. a new life center. Okay, so we're going to talk about resilience, but why don't we, before we get into the specifics of resilience and why it's so important and how to develop it and all that stuff, why don't you just take a minute and talk to me and and, and the listeners about why it is that you do what you do, how you got involved with a new and 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 what you're hoping to accomplish as a result of doing this work. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want everyone out there to know that if you have a chronic illness or an autoimmune disorder or a mental health condition, then I understand you. Um, that was my path as well. And growing up, I was a kid who did not know how to handle the stressors of life. So when parents fought or I had a sibling being born or I changed schools or I graduated, I suppressed all of that stress and didn't realize it was going to have a grave impact on my body. And so what happened with me and happens with all of us with chronic conditions is that I suppressed the stress and over time, this stress manifested in different kinds of chronic health conditions, more on the low end of the scale and getting progressively worse as I became older. So things like chronic sinus infections and allergies turned into things like depression, anxiety, and arthritis which turned into things such as alcoholism and bulimia and anorexia, which then turned into more chronic uh, autoimmune disorders like Hashimoto's, things like lupus, MS, common variable immune dis def uh, deficiency disorder. And so by the time I was about 28, this progression continued. I developed eight autoimmune disorders and had a handful of chronic illnesses like eating disorders, alcoholism, mental health, uh, depression, anxiety, and I was a licensed professional counselor too. <laughs> I thought that somehow in this quest of becoming very sick and not handling stressors well, that I could fix myself by being a therapist. And unfortunately that didn't work. And I ended up just taking home all of the stress of my clients as well as my own. And I actually had to leave my profession at 28 I had worked at the Betty Ford Center, which is an alcohol and drug treatment center, and I could not physically do my job anymore um, because of my autoimmune uh, conditions. They said if I was exposed to illnesses, it could kill me. So I decided, okay, I need to leave my career. I have to find an answer for all these things. So search far and wide, all kinds of specialists, Western medicine, food diets, superfoods, supplements, in infusions, plasma, you name it, and nothing was helping me until someone, a practitioner, guided me to a new life center. And that takes me to where we are today, which is where I now work. And they were the first people that helped me see that there was a connection between my suppressed stress and my body breaking down. And that the connection was me and that there was something I could do about it. And I came here and joined a clinical study they were having, a year-long study, and within a few months, I started to notice all my autoimmune conditions and chronic conditions started to dissolve and resolve. And I honestly could not figure out how it was working. All I was learning was new education on stress in life, but my health was completely turning around and I wasn't doing any new diet, no supplement. It was just learning. And within a number of months, I was able to get off all my medication, all my autoimmune and chronic conditions resolved. Eight years later, I have no, none of these conditions. I don't have an eating disorder. I can drink regularly like a social drinker. Um, I don't have any food sensitivities or allergies. My immune system is back to normal. I'm on no medications and no supplements. And I now teach what I was taught and take others down the same path of healing and everyone I work with gets better. So it's very exciting for me to know that we have found the root of chronic health conditions and autoimmune disorders and when you were talking, Dave, about where I want to go, 
my passion, I'm here because I want to share this message out in the world on a large stage to let anybody who's suffering with conditions that doctors have no explanation for and no solution, to let them know that there is a way for their bodies to heal and self-repair, that they don't have to be lifelong, that we don't have to be on and off the wagon for the rest of our lives, that we don't have to be managing with medications and supplements and food diets for the rest of our lives, that our bodies have the power to heal. We just need to know how to make that happen. What do you say to all the people out there that are unwilling to believe that this is true? Because you know, as well as I, there are people out there and I can, I know some of them. I was raised in a home with yeah. one that if you, if you try to convince them that they don't have a problem, they're going to slit your throat over it. And, and, you know, I, I grew up in a home where I had a parent who's no longer with us, but we had like a trophy, uh, a trophy shelf of pill bottles because at some level, my mother almost loved the fact that she could name all the things wrong with her. And she's on this pill and that pill. And I got this now. And it was almost like a point of pride or bragging that I've got all these problems is kind of how she would communicate. And it's funny because as a, as a little child, I started to develop uh, lung issues, uh, migraine headache issues, uh, stomach issues. And I started, and, and my mother got me on medication really young and no, nothing helped it at all. But I'm just listening to you. And, I, and I, 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 I love what you're saying because I'm a, I'm a person who got off of that stuff because none of it was helping me. But if I didn't get off of it and I didn't get out of that house eventually, I would have been brainwashed into thinking, this is just my life. This is what I inherited. And I wonder how many people are looking at or listening to this saying, that's bullshit. No way, no way. Let me tell you, because my mother had it, my grandmother had it, my, my great grandmother had it. Uh, how many people do you encounter that just don't buy it? That's a great question. Um, I welcome all of those people who I understand why people out there might say, I don't understand this or I don't buy into it because what I'm talking about is so different than what we've been ingrained in our Western culture. So I was in that understanding for a very long time that the only way was through my doctor and through medications and through supplements and food diets. So I understand because I lived in that place for so long, but I, ha but I have to be honest and anybody that's living in that place with a chronic condition knows there is no solution in that. When it's lifelong, when someone's telling you you have a chronic condition and it's lifelong and there's nothing you can do about it, then they're telling you that they don't have a solution and they don't know where it's coming from and they don't know why you have it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Genetics or not. My right. autoimmune runs in my family. Alcoholism runs in my family. I had the genetic predisposition as well. So do many of the people that I work with. And what I know to be true, which is what I'm excited to talk about today it doesn't, our genes don't impede on our body's natural ability to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Our bodies are made to heal and self-repair themselves. Chronic health, mental health, chronic autoimmune disorders, that is, that is, goes in the face of how our bodies were naturally designed. Yeah. And our bodies should be able to heal and self-repair. We just need to get out of the way, deal with our stress and learn how. And for all of those that are wondering, like, how could this happen? Or am I an exception? Everyone I work with working on stress, stress has resolved their conditions. And sure. I am one of those people. So I definitively, without any reason for doubt, know that this is the way out, but it is for those who are open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I think it was in third grade, I got a headache and my, my mom historically suffered from migraine headaches, which by the way, that's a really bad headache. And, and, and I do think that in knowing what I know now, I got those headaches as a, as a third grader, second grader, and was finally put on medication for those headaches. And even with the daily medication and then the extra doses, when a headache would come on, I still got the headaches. I threw up a lot. I used to throw up every day before school uh, as I got a little bit older and my stress and my inability to work through things and, and my, my general um, 
I just didn't feel good ever, ever. And I wasn't able to handle uh, criticism. I wasn't able to handle somebody giving me a hard time because I, I never felt right ever, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, is it was around ninth grade or 10th grade. My, I think it was probably ninth grade. My grandmother who had moved in with us, she had said to me one day, I just wasn't in a good state. And she said, Hey, um, Dave, why don't you, have you ever considered not taking that medication anymore? Why don't you not take that anymore? And I didn't know it was an option. I was like 13, 14 years old. And my mother always took it. And she's, and I said, why? She said, well, I just think that you might feel better if you didn't take the medicine. I, I wonder if you would. And so I literally stopped taking the medicine and it, right away. And that was 37 years ago. Oh. I have not had a headache in 37 years. But I also eventually moved. The stressors didn't go away right away, but other things started to go away. Stomach issues started to go away as I got older. Headaches gone. Um, and, and, and a number of other things. So I, I relate to what you're saying. How do you reach somebody who lives in an environment where stress is the norm? It's a habit. How do you help them? Re like, I didn't know it. I knew I lived in an environment that was ridden with stress. Every day was chaos. But it was what I was used to. So I didn't, I just thought, not only do I live this way, I, I have trouble breathing. I've got asthma, I get migraine headaches, I get stomach issues, I've got bronchitis, all those things, thinking, oh, I just inherited all this stuff. Now, looking back, I didn't inherit any of it. I was just kind of conditioned to be that way. And uh, so how do you wake up from it? My grandmother helped me wake up from it. That's a great question. And I, important to that question is to also give the background and how did we get these conditions? Because if it's important to know how to undo them, but we want to know, and I'm a why person, why do we as people out there who, if you have a chronic health condition or an autoimmune condition or a mental health condition, why? Because our society doesn't know why. And I know how challenging it was for me to feel like a mystery. So before we talk about the, what do we do in stressful situations when we can't really get out of it? I first want to let everyone know that what happens for people like you or I who have chronic health conditions, it's a progressive suppression of stress. So it didn't happen the moment that we got a, let's say that we, we, we developed addiction or the moment that we were diagnosed with lupus. This historically started happening when we, we were very young and we suppress the stressors of our life because we just didn't know how to handle it. You know, push it down, move on. Unfortunately, it has to go somewhere and it goes inside of our bodies. And I like to look at it visually like the layers of the earth. That is what has happened inside of us time after time, year after year, we've suppressed our stress until eventually all of us who have had a, have a chronic health condition reached a tipping point where there was just one more stressor that we suppressed that was one too many and our body could not physically handle it anymore. And it tipped the body over into a nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for our fight or flight response which is a really great response that's supposed to only last a few hours. But unfortunately, those of us who have a lifetime of suppressed stress and don't handle stress well, we got tipped over into the sympathetic. Flight or flight kick picked up on our chronic everyday stressors like marriage, family, finances, things like that as a constant threat and got you locked in. So people with chronic health conditions became are locked in the sympathetic nervous system locked in a 24 hour fight or flight. And it's there that our body goes into that state of disrepair where chronic health conditions happen, like chronic pain, autoimmune disorders, addictions, all live and thrive and develop stuck in that sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. and, and I think from there, it's really important too, to, to answer your question, what do we do about those of us who are in stressful situations? who maybe are a single mom out there or who are taking care of their parents or who have a disabled uh, partner or who have a very dysfunctional family system like most of us. And the good news is, is that stress is coming from you and your, in a loving way, inability or inability to handle stress. That's what I had to realize about myself because I had other siblings that went through some of the same things I did, they didn't get these kinds of conditions. And so 
it's our response to life that determines whether we're stressed or not. And right. that's something we can be in control of. So we actually don't need to change our environment because the real issue is us, is, was me and my response to stress. And when I change my stress response, my life stayed the same, but my body was able to heal and self-repair. And I'll, we can talk more about how that happens. Yeah. Um, and you, you stay, you have the same life. It's amazing. Right. And so you use the word response, which is not necessarily a reaction. It's, it's more deliberate and intentional. Mm -hmm. In order to respond to anything, you have to be aware that, of what's going on and maybe aware of, I would think, and maybe you can comment on this, you're at the mercy of your perceptions and your interpretations. So if, for example, you grew up in an environment and your responses or your reactions were different than, say, your siblings, my guess is that you were interpreting or internalizing them differently, which triggered, say, stress in you and maybe nothing in them. So what? how much of your response is predicated on your interpretations, your perceptions, and things of that nature? That's a great question. From my perspective, our response is everything, is everything. So think about, I like to use the example of flying on an airplane, right? That's the same stimulus. And think about the different stress responses that people can have to the same event. Whereas you might have one person that's so stressed, they have to take medication. Another person maybe doesn't fly because they're so, have such a stress response. There might be another person who has almost no stress response or people like I, my sister, who she's better in the air than she likes the air better than, than land. And so if it was the airplane that was giving us the stress, then we would all have the same response. So thus our response is everything. Our response to the events and circumstances in our life determine whether or not we are going to be stressed in our body feeling that, that stress, or whether we're going to handle it with resilience, which is an ability to be adaptive in times of stress and mm -hmm. to bounce back. Mm -hmm. And those of us, from my perspective and my experience, and this is talking about me too, who have developed a health condition, a chronic health condition, or an autoimmune condition, or an addiction, or a mental health disorder, all that is, there's nothing wrong with us. It's just a sign flashing sign that we are not and have not been resilient in our life to stress. But that's okay because it's a learned skill and it's a learned skill of how to respond to life in a different way with resilience, which will then allow our body to finally heal and self-repair. How often does stress become somebody's identity? You know, I think how I would like to answer that is more to take it back to the bigger picture of chronic health conditions. And you touched on this with your mom, but from my experience as someone who is chronically ill for a large majority of my life and working with others, I have found that it is a major identity that we have of being people who are maybe have it harder, think we have it harder than others or wearing it as a badge of honor that we have these kinds of health conditions or have to take these medications or have the life that we have. And the problem by thinking that we're unique and special and wearing our lives as badges of honor is that we could never overcome and come out the other side of life and stress. And one of the major things that I teach all of my students is to let them know, hey, step one, is to realize in a loving way, you're not unique and special. That as humans, we all go through the same stressors with maybe ever so slight variances, but we're gonna have people we love die. We're gonna have families with family members with health issues. We're gonna likely maybe get a divorce or have marital problems, problems with our kids, financial issues, retirement issues, issues at work. We're gonna leave our career multiple times. We're gonna buy homes, we're gonna sell homes. We're going to graduate. I mean, we're going to get old. I mean, all of these stressors are stressors that almost everybody goes through and they have throughout our history of mankind mm -hmm. and they will in the future. 
So we have to normalize our experiences. No, we're not unique. And I had to get off my high horse and realize my background, my experiences, my history was not unique, was not special, so that I could actually normalize it, overcome it, and be able to handle the stress versus it being so big that I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's actually not that interesting too, when you, when you listen and I I go back, I probably sounded this way as a younger person where I might, my lead story might be the latest problem I have or the latest sickness I have, or or the last person that died in my life. And, Mm -hmm. and I look back and I don't, I don't think I dominated conversations that way, but I'm sure at some point I might have, it's embarrassing to think it, it's it's so selfish when you think about it because to your point everybody has something going on and why why do my challenges have to be the lead story all the time you know and so I, I wonder though uh, relating this back to identity how many people and I, I don't I don't ask this for a count or a percentage I just mm-hmm. use those words because I'm limited with my vocabulary but how often do people not want to let go? If you take away the habit of complaining or the habit of being stressed out or feeling poorly, sometimes people don't know how to fill that conversation anymore. They don't know what to be if the problem goes away. That's one. The other part to that is, is if, if, if the problem goes away because they have to admit that it's them, isn't there an element of embarrassment or humiliation. I can't believe that I did this to myself. And are they really ready to admit that? Yeah. Well, I'll speak about myself. And what I found is I have to, with all the people I work with, we had to come to a crossroads. I had to come to a crossroads where the pain of where I was, was greater than the fear or the perceived pain of moving forward. And some people might call that a rock bottom, but we have to get to that point if we really want to change. Now, if that pain isn't greater and I'm okay and I'm pretty much, and I want to stay in that place of complaining. I want to stay in the place of my chronic health conditions, of my stress life, of having this excuse, because that's what these conditions I realized become for all of us. I had the perfect excuse to get out of work, school, social affairs, friends, family things. I had to realize even that the pain of where I was got to be too great. Mm -hmm. The the wear and tear these conditions had on my soul, on my emotional state, on my quality of life, I had to change and I had to start, this change started by looking at me. But not everybody's there yet. Um, And some people might need a little bit of time to get there. But when we are ready, we're ready. And we want to be healthy. We want to be healthy. And when we resolve these conditions, and again, when the way to do that is we have to eliminate the very reason we're stuck in the sympathetic, which is chronic stress. And that's a learned skill, a learned perspective. And when you eliminate chronic stress, your fight or flight, fight or flight turns off. We enter into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is where the body was born to live and it will heal and self-repair naturally. And our brain chemistry goes back to normal. Our immune system goes back to normal. Our chronic conditions like chronic pain, um, autoimmune, they all resolve and we become healthy again and emotionally healthy. And I like to tell people when you live in the parasympathetic nervous system, when you resolve these chronic health conditions that you've been living with for years, it feels so good. You wake up at in peace. It's like the sky parts. Life feels possible again. I feel excited to live and to be myself, but that feeling and that internal health is so amazing that you don't want to go back, that you would never want to go back to the pain and the agony and the complaining and the constant rat race of stress and stress and more stress. When you learn how to handle your life, when you learn how to handle stress and live in the parasympathetic nervous system, there really isn't anything better than that. Um, So, and that's true for myself and everyone who gets to experience it. What was your first, when were you first aware that this program was making a difference for you? Do you remember the moment when you first noticed something different? Was it a, and, and if you did, if, if you can comment on that, but also what was it? Was it a, was it a thought or was it a physical feeling or was it both? 
Well, I think for me, there's, there's two instances, Dave, but the one that really stands out, my healing began the moment I came to a new life center and I sat down at the table across from my now mentor. And he looked at the stack of paperwork for all my conditions. And he looked at me and said, why are you doing this to yourself? And I said, whoa, (laughs) whoa, how dare you? But whoa, no, no one had ever asked me that. Were you mad? Were you angry with I was a little, I was a little pissed. I'm not going to lie, but I knew hundred percent that there was truth in what he just said. I said, internally, I said, oh, how did he know? That's my secret. Oh, can, well, can, I, can I ask you, I, I'm interrupting you. I realize that. So you use the word excuses mm-hmm. earlier. Were these, were you consciously using these excuses, hoping that others would believe them? Did you believe them? Were you hoping that, hey, this is just serious enough a statement where no one's going to question me, so therefore I can keep behaving this way? What was going on in your head? Well, this ventures into a territory, Dave, that no one likes to talk about. And this is called the elephant in the room. And although I do feel qualified to speak to this because I have been a person with chronic health conditions. And here's what I've realized in my years as being a sick person, um, becoming healthy and working with other people with chronic health conditions. We all think it's our little secret that no one else has the secret, but we actually all share the same secret. And the secret is this, that when we're diagnosed with a chronic health condition, it's challenging and painful and very, very hard. And of course we wouldn't want it on anyone. And there's also another side to the coin that as time goes on and we start to realize, hey, you know, that life that I felt like I couldn't handle that world that stressed me out so much, I have the perfect excuse that no one will question that I can pull out at any time to get out of anything in life that I don't want to do. And I can hear your listeners say, how dare she say that? That's terrible. But it's true for anybody with a chronic health condition. It's okay. I know I worked with so many people. We all no, and when I tell people this, their eyes get really big and then they say, oh my gosh, you know too. But yeah, of course we're going to use it as an excuse not to go to that, that th- Thanksgiving that lasts six hours. Or, you know, it's a, it's a work day. We just feel like we just can't do it. Or, you know, we have to pick up the kids and we're really tired. I mean, we can pull out these symptoms and use these illnesses as a reason to get out of life. And when my mentor sat across from me and said, hey, why are you doing this to yourself? I knew he knew that it wasn't just these things weren't just happening to me, that there was a me component in all of this. But the beautiful thing, and that's what that change point was, was when I realized there was a me, I realized there was something I could do about it. I realized there was something I could do to heal. And that's all it is for all of us is we need to deal with our stress. The root cause from my perspective is not our genetics. It's not our environment. It is not the air we breathe. It's not the foods that we're eating. It's not your leaky gut. Um, the, the pro, it's not toxins in the environment or mold. The problem is us. And the problem is that we just need to learn how to handle stress better so that our system isn't compromised. When our system gets compromised, like I shared, the layer of stress and tipping over to the sympathetic, then we start to develop all of these chronic health conditions. Education and learning a new way of handling life, which is what I call resilience, being adaptive and bouncing back in times of stress, that is the solution for your body to get out of the sympathetic, enter the parasympathetic, and it heal and self-repairing itself all on its own without the need for medication, supplements, or diets. And then you have a life to tell people, it's so wonderful, you don't need an excuse from it anymore. I had such a scared life that that's why I felt like I needed these illnesses as kind of a security blanket. I didn't know any better. And I say that with love to everyone. It's not a bad thing. It's like, we just never were taught how to do life. So of course we're going to wrap ourselves in these conditions, but when we get healthy and resolve these, we no longer need these conditions to be our safety blanket because we have the tools and skills we need to do life. Okay. So a couple of questions. I cut you off earlier. So just, just to be clear. So when you were going through the process for the first time at a new, 
it was more of a, an awareness that, whoa, I'm doing this to myself. That's the first realization. It wasn't a physical realization. It was a mental realization. Mental realization. Yeah, that was the okay. first step for me. Okay, so let, let, let's just, let's get into the food because I would debate that and say, uh, you know, when you think about the way in which we say manufacture food today or have historically manufactured food over the last, say, 20 years, the mass production or the aggressive raising of, say, cattle or chickens and some of the stuff we feed these animals. You're saying that our bodies are strong enough to deal with the fact that these animals are being are eating, say, plastic as they're eating pretzels and candy. We can our, our systems are built to deal with that for for a sustained period of time. The way our bodies were naturally made, the way our bodies were designed, our bodies are designed to be able to naturally detox and cleanse the foods that we're eating, the air that we're breathing. All right. So if we're having a problem detoxing and cleansing, or we're getting these food allergies and food sensitivities, the food that we're eating, I like to tell people food is not the problem. Food is not the problem. And I know that I spent, gosh, probably 10 years on so many restrictive food diets. I was only eating five foods by the time I came to a new life center. Everything was the, 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 the most high level food that you could get from the highest source because I lived in fear of the foods that were, were in our environment, in our system. Mm -hmm. And yes, when we have a compromised immune system and we're bodies in the sympathetic nervous system, it's not detoxing and cleansing. It's not handling the foods that we're eating well. It's not handling our environmental toxins well. In the parasympathetic nervous system, the body can handle all kinds of foods and toxins and bacterias naturally, enabling us to eat in a healthy way, the foods that we feel like without food being any kind of condition. But here's the point I really want to make. Food is not the problem. It's not the way out. If I have an issue with foods, all that's telling me is that I have a compromised immune system due to stress. Our challenges as a society with foods is a symptom of our inability to handle stress in life. When we learn how to handle stress in life by building our resilience, which is our ability to be adaptive and to bounce back in times of stress, our body will enter into the parasympathetic nervous system, our immune system goes back to normal, our digestive system heals and self repairs, and we're able to naturally consume the foods in our environment without issue. And I also wanna make the point, I ate so clean for so many years thinking that that was really healthy and that that was a really good thing. Here's what I found that what I was doing unintentionally was disabling my body in knowing how to handle a variety of foods. When I was eating five foods, my body didn't know how to handle the millions of other foods out there. So being someone who don't, no longer has food allergies and food sensitivities, I have found it vital and key that I actually allow my body to have a whole variety of foods. Yes, healthy foods, but even unhealthy foods from time to time right. to continue to allow it to have that ability to handle everything. Right. So, so when I'm listening to him, like you're not obviously recommending with no, no, no downing McDonald's, but you wouldn't recommend somebody eat McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, would you? Of course, who would? Right. Who, right. Of course so, okay. not. Yeah, who would? so, so to, to some who extent, a, a, an unhealthy diet, I, I believe is just like a, drinking, having a couple of cocktails is no big deal. But if it's, if it's morning, noon, and night over time, food and alcohol or drugs are going to catch you at some point, no matter how. And eventually I think it's going to destroy your ability to manage uh, stress uh, or, or limit your ability to develop resilience. Um, but let me go back. Let me go back to the resilience piece. Let's talk about, uh, I just got off. I, you know, it's funny. I just got off the phone with a client and they're dealing with some concerns about their staff and the staff's ability to or, or the staff's level of resilience in the current market, for example, you know, there are some things that, you know, some volatility in the market, we know the stock market's up and down, we know that some of the larger companies are laying off, and we keep hearing threats of recession, all noise, but could be real at some point. And the concern that the team is not built, they're already panicking, they don't know how they, they they're not handling it well. So they kept bringing up the term resilience. So let's let's get let's get to that and talk about 
how how would you recommend or what what are some steps or things people should be thinking about in order to start developing this skill yeah that's a that's a great question i also just want to go back to something you just shared dave of talking about people who overdo it right maybe we're overeating over drinking over consuming and maybe that not allowing us to be as resilient but i just want to say that if we are overdoing it in different kinds of areas all that's saying is no, we're not being resilient and we're not handling our stress well. Right. Whether that we're overeating, whether we're over exercising, whether we are over supplementing, right. <laughs> whether we are, you know, over watching on our phones, over watching TV, that is our ill planned coping mechanism for stress. And it's just a sign, okay, I need to develop my resilience. My resilience muscle has gone weak. Because right. here's the thing about resilience, and I want everyone to listen because this is really important. Resilience is innate to who we are as humans. So the reason we're here right now as the dominant species is because we have a wildly natural um, ability to be resilient as humans. I mean, it's how we survived when so many others didn't. You know, and our ancestors, they, their survival was dependent on their daily resilience, whether they could find the, find the food or not, or fight off the predator or find the water, or fight off the neighboring village, or handle the unknowns of the weather and famine and floods. Now, their resilience muscle, if we want to call it a muscle, even though it's not, was incredibly strong, incredibly strong. And while they were dealing with those kinds of things, when we weren't finding autoimmune conditions and chronic health conditions in our, in our late, you know, early, early ancestors. But why is it that these days, and this year that we have such an almost epidemic of autoimmune, of mental health conditions, of addiction. Well, in my perspective, it's because we have not grown and developed our resilience. It's gone weak. It's gone soft. Because unlike our ancestors who lived having to survival, depending on their resilience, our life is so easy these days. I mean, think about it. If we want food, we can press a button. If we don't know where someone is, we can give them a phone call. If I'm worried about the weather, I can check the news. I mean, everything we need is literally at our couch and at our fingertips. And unfortunately, that's caused our natural resilience to become very, very weak. Almost we call it fragile resilience atrophy. And for those of us who are wired like myself, our body uh, handles stress and our resilience atrophy by developing chronic health conditions. The solution is we just have to build that resilience muscle, regardless if we are a stay-at-home mom or just a stressed uh, CEO or someone with a lot of chronic health conditions. We need to build and grow that resilience muscle. And the first step to do that is we have to realize what I shared earlier, that stress is just a part of life and that our stressors are not unique to us. When I realize that stress is these parts of life, our life, and I can change and not see them as stressors, but just part of life. Things like financial troubles, losing loved ones, illness of family members, losing jobs. Then I know that I can overcome them. So right. I have to take them down to size and say, yeah. okay, this is life. Step two is what I spoke about with the airplane example. And step two is realizing, oh, stress comes from me. I'm in control of my stress response. If it's coming for me, then there's something I can do about it. And then the third step is growing and building our natural resilience, which is the antidote to stress. And we do that by going out into life willingly into the challenges, into the stressors, into the ups and downs to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. So in the past, what we would do is we would run through life. We would hide from it. We would dig, put our head in the sand to the stressors. That's fragile. That's anti-resilience. Building resilience is going out to life to grow and to learn, to fall down, to pick ourselves back up, to become internally stronger and find out who we are and what we are capable of. Mm -hmm. Going at life from that perspective is how we grow our natural resilience, no matter where you are, what your life situation is, or where you live. And with that growing that resilience muscle, quote unquote, the body picks up on that, realizes that you are no longer under a constant threat because you are handling your life and learning how. 
and again, gets out of the sympathetic, turns off fight or flight, and your body naturally heals and self repairs in the parasympathetic nervous system by getting out into life to grow and to learn, building your resilience. Right. How often are we marketing products and services and pills to people who might be feeling stress or pain or discomfort or what, whatever you want to call it? Here's, here's your solution. If you want to feel this way now, take this. If you want to look this way now, take this. As if there's a quick fix to this way of thinking, as if, as if feeling or thinking this way is wrong or shameful. Are we marketing or targeting people and trying to expose these experiences or feelings as wrong, bad, shameful, just to market crap to them? You and know what I mean? Vers versus face it. L listen, you want, you want to fix your problem? Get your ass out of your house and walk into the crowd if you're afraid of people. If you want to lose weight, stop eating that, get out and walk around the block. Like the reality is, is it's going to take work and effort and commitment, right? No matter what it is versus, or you could just take this pill. If you're feeling a little drowsy, just take this. If you need, if you need to go to sleep, just take this. If you feel overweight, just take that. You know, are we, are we marketing and preying on people as if these feelings of stress and weakness or whatever you want to call it are wrong? Well, I think it's important for people to know out there, the American Stress Institute estimates that over 90% of doctor's visits are stress related, are mm. coming from stress illnesses. And so when people hear about resilience and that being the solution to stress, I know for myself at first, I thought, oh, resilience, we are such a buzzword. Oh gosh, you know, blah, 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 resilience. I, I studied resilience in graduate school. I taught resilience as a therapist. I had no idea what resilience was. So what I want people to know out there is that resilience is simple. It is simple. I teach this to seven-year-olds. I teach it to retirees, 74 plus and everybody in between, that we all inherently have the innate desire to be resilient within us. We just need to know how. And it's a simple perspective shift. It's mm -hmm. a simple learned skill. And yes, when we learn resilience and we learn how to do our life, the beautiful cherry on top of that is our body exits the sympathetic, enters into the parasympathetic. And if we have chronic conditions, it heals and self-repairs those so we don't have to keep going to the doctors and getting prescribed the newest medication or the newest supplement or do another blood work test. Our body goes back into a state of homeostasis simply by learning a simple perspective of how to do life. Mm -hmm. And that is resilience. And that's what I teach. That's what I'm an expert in. And that is the pathway for myself. That's how I healed and self-repaired and no longer have my conditions. And that's how that's true for my students too. And I also want to make a point that a lot of people talk about remission. And I want to be very clear to the audience out there. I am not in remission. Remission means you still have your conditions. Remission. So if I was, say, you know, in remission for my alcoholism, that would mean I was not drinking. I'm not in remission. I don't have the condition anymore. My thyroid isn't being attacked by my immune system anymore. I don't have eczema anymore. And my gut is not leaky anymore. My hair is no longer falling out. I don't wake up with anxiety. I no longer have these conditions. And that's, as a society, what I want us all to be aiming for. Remission is kind of a fallacy because it's only a matter of time before there will be a stressor because we're not resilient that will knock us out of remission. So what we want to learn is how can I resolve these conditions so I no longer have them, period not manage uh, the symptoms of it and hope for remission. Question for you on along these lines, it sounds like your work focuses on how to reframe thoughts and perspectives and interpretations. Am I, do I have that right? I, a little different. That goes more in the lines of maybe more of a therapy, CBT, DBT uh, perspective. What I do, I actually am a teacher. I educate people on new ways of understanding stress, of understanding life so that they can have that perspective shift on their own. So it's not uh, maybe like reframing or affirmation based or journaling based. It's not that. It's actually, I, I lay out a pathway of here's a way to look at life and look at your past and look at your present in a way no one ever taught you was possible. 
And when I, we just didn't even know that pathways was there. And right. that's what I focus on teaching my students. How important, Josie, are your relationships, uh, family, friends, the people in your life? How important is sleep? How important is socialization? How important is food, hydration, or are those all less important? I want to tell everybody the, the, the singular most important component and factor, the defining factor is you. The defining factor for me is me that though everything that you just listed, those are great. And those are, you know, nice for quality of life, but they're secondary to the only factor that really matters in, in determining a person's experience, stress in life. And that's me. And thank goodness, because when I rely on, let's say my relationships or my job or my background or my partner as that support system. I'm not learning to get everything I need from myself. And when I learn that everything I need is within me, I have everything I need to handle life, to handle stress, to be resilient, then I can be a whole person going out into life, having healthy relationships, right. having healthy relationships with food, having, having healthy relationships with coworkers and my children and the life around me, but knowing that I am the source for everything I need. I, from my perspective, my conditions came from me. They didn't come from my family. They didn't come from my past. No, not from trauma. No, it was me. And thus I am my solution and my way out. We are everything, everything. <laughs> I, I love it. I think this is so empowering. And I hope that people are listening to this. I tend to lean on having a strong system or structure or lifestyle healthiness around us. I think it's it's never going to hurt. But to your point, it's got to start here because if we don't bring a full person to the table, we're not going to attract it. I hope I hope that we're going to be moving toward a world of filled with people that actually believe they can do this. I, sometimes I get skeptical and I think, are we just heading in the opposite direction? And it, it's, it's nerve wracking. I, I don't, I don't see many people thinking like you do. And I'm glad you found what you found. And I'm glad you're helping people uh, do the same. Is there yeah, anything that we didn't cover anything that I didn't ask you or anything you want to say that maybe we didn't get to? Well, I think actually, Dave, I want to just, just go off of what you had just said. And, and I want to clarify for people that what I want you to know is that you are your solution that you are your answer. The solution is you, whether that is for your chronic health condition or your chronic pain or um, the marriage issues or your autoimmune condition um, or your addiction issues, the solution is you. You are your answer. You are the solution. And we can't find that solution outside in the world. We're not going to find it through a different uh, person or a different relationship or a different food or a different medication. For chronic health conditions, which is my expertise, the solution is you and your ability to simply learn how to see life from a new perspective of dealing with your stress so that you can allow your body to heal and self-repair. I spent my whole life searching for the answers out here, thinking that the newest superfood or that next supplement bottle or that next doctor even, or that next practitioner was somehow going to save me. I didn't realize that no one could save me. I had to be the one to save myself. And it's a beautiful journey. And it's a simple journey by saving yourself and healing your body by simply learning how to handle life and stress. I, want, I can't drive this home enough. The process is simple. If we're making it complicated, if we feel hopeless, if nothing's working, it's just a sign we're looking in the wrong avenue. We're looking in the wrong place. It's all very simple. When I found that the solution was me and I was my answer, all I needed to do was learn how to build that resilience. My life and my health unfolded and, and resolved within a matter of months. And I see it happening every day with the students I work with. All kinds of people, all kinds of backgrounds who've had these conditions for decades, some of them. Within a matter of months, all resolving, all self-repairing, um, becoming whole again, learning how to do life again. And how long do these folks generally work with you? Does it vary? That's a great question. So I, what I offer is a 10 week program. 
It was about three and a half months. And in three and a half months, that's all it takes for a body through the education that I teach on life and stress to exit the sympathetic, enter into the parasympathetic. And in the parasympathetic nervous system, every student's body heals and self repairs itself and goes through that process until the process is complete. Um, and everybody I work with gets in the parasympathetic nervous system within that those 10 weeks. And do you stay in touch with students beyond the 10 week period? I do, Dave. I love when students stay in touch. Um, after they graduate, I offer a graduate program, which is part of my included in my course. And we meet twice a month on Wednesday evenings for an hour and just touch base and help remind them of the few things they need just to stay resilient and stay in that parasympathetic. Um, and I mean, amazing success, I mean, amazing stories. I mean, I know I'm one of them, but I've been in contact even with people who came through this program, you know, 15, 20 years ago, they're all still healthy and seeing my students out there thriving without their conditions, living life, learning how, um, it is, it's a beautiful thing. Right. And is thing. is this something that is recognized by insurance or is this kind of an out-of-pocket thing? You don't have to give me details on costs or anything like that. Yeah, but. that's fine. Nope. We are out of pocket um, in what we do and what we teach. Um, but I always tell people, hey, uh, you know, when people graduate and you're in the parasympathetic and your conditions are resolved, I mean, lifelong conditions resolved, that's the greatest gift um, anyone could ever give to, to yourself. Good stuff, Josie. Good stuff. So t- so how, how do people reach you if they want to? Yeah, great question. I love hearing from people, especially on these podcasts. So if something I said to you triggered you or brought up a good, really good question or made you think of a neighbor or anything, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Um, you can find me by email. Um, it's Josie, J-O-S-I-E at the Hashimoto's fix.com. I'll spell that out. T H E. H-A-S-H-I-M-O-T-O-S-F-I-X.com. And you can find me, learn more about my story, what I do at the HashimotosFix.com website. And I just want to give a disclaimer. While my niche is Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disorder for women because it's the most prevalent autoimmune disorder for women, the work I do works with almost all autoimmune and chronic illnesses. So things like chronic pain, fibromyalgia, migraines, um, things like eating disorders or addictions. Um, these are all chronic conditions from my perspective. And I have a chronic res- um, symptom resolution program, again, 10 weeks, get your body in the parasympathetic and it will heal and self-repair itself. Good stuff. And I'll make sure I include your contact yep. information Show on notes. the release. Josie Warren, thank you very much. Great topic. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.